what's going to be a dynamite championship wrestling program. Got a match going right now. The Assassin going against Jeff Jarrett. Jeff puts it over the shoulder. Nice move by Jeff Jarrett. Hooks him with the arm of the Assassin. Not having any luck at all as Jeff Jarrett with that fine athletic ability is in control here. CWA heavyweight title match coming up later today. Yes, sir. Bill Dundee, the superstar, is going against Bill Hickerson with the CWA title at stake. Jeff gets a warning about using the fist on the assassin. It's been asked right back. I was going to say it's been just about give and take in that department, but the referee doing his job, giving them both warnings in there. With the wrist bent back, the assassin hanging with Jeff Jarrett in there now, pounds him in the shoulder, and backs him over to where he can get a standing side headlock. Jeff shakes him off into the rope. Leapfrog coming off. Jeff, a big leapfrog. Look at that drop kick. Way up in the air. Two, three. Three minutes, 34 seconds, the victory for Jeff Jarrett. Yowza, a big one. We're going to be looking at the CWA heavyweight title match between Phil Hickerson and uh, Bill Dundee. We'll be meeting a brand newcomer, Cactus Jack, a little later, and more action from the CWA Championship Wrestling. After the opening match in which Jeff Jarrett defeated the assassin in the event you just tuned in. Well, we're obviously surrounded by uh, the Tennessee Stud Stud Stable, Robert. Yeah, that's right, Slick. Yo, know, you're looking mighty fine today. You know, you're a man of the media, Lance Russell. You're supposed to tell things straight the way that they are. But I understand from listening to you, you make about as many mistakes to be on television as anybody I ever heard. One thing for sure, let's get straight right off the front of the matter here. There is nothing wrong with the stable except they're kicking everybody's butt from one end of this country to the other that they win every time they go in the ring. The stable's the most stable organization in the country today. One problem, and that's his problem, not mine, the former Buckhouse Brown. Brown, you are gonna pay, baby, stable style. And what I mean by pay, Lance, let me reiterate on that. What I mean by pay is you're gonna reach in your pockets every time you climb in that ring, and you're gonna put it in our pocket. Yeah. Because yeah. we owe your contract, boy, yeah. if you know what I'm talking about. Now, let me move on down the line here, Lance, if I may. You know it's not gonna be too long before the Tennessee stud himself, maybe just weeks, will be climbing back in that ring himself, baby. But before I do, before I climb back in the ring, I got a gentleman that's gonna be doing a job for me. However, I'm not going to tell you who it is because the last time I told you a mystery partner, you blurted your big mouth off, and it weren't your job to do that either. You've got real problems. You know what I'm talking about, Lance Russell? Now, let me again run through my fine stable, starting right here with our champion, the CWA heavyweight champion himself, Bill Hickerson, old cow killer. We're proud of you, Bill. The other man right here, Jerry Young. Jerry? You're going to take care of big brick house, Brown. Boy. With lumberjack rules, I might add. That means put everybody around the ring. Stable men around the ring. Think about it, brick house, Brown. That we're going to be the ones around that ring, and he's going to throw your butt out, and we're going to whoop you, boy, like you never imagined being whipped. And then my man right here, Jimmy Golden. Jimmy's my cousin. And he'd have been here when I was back jumped. My leg was hurt. But Jimmy's a busy man. He's traveling around doing jobs for the stable, trying to get some guys lined up for a big job for the stable. What do you think, tell you something, Mr. Lance Russell. You people in your southern hospitality hasn't been too good. you got the finest man in the world, the greatest wrestler in the world right here, the Tennessee stud, and y'all treat him like dirt. I'm going to tell you something. You backstabbed him for your last time. I'm going to be here backing him up 100%. From now on, and I got a man that I found while I was out all over the country, brother, <laughs> that I want to introduce you to. He's fantastic. Oh, Jimmy. Uh oh What is this, a new recruit for the hey, study? I day? know who he's talking about, but don't you start thinking too quick mystery partner, because I'll tell you who the mystery partner is when I get to the building. Take this day. Welcome to the stable, baby. Slap that on right there. Get a stable feeling inside of yourself, baby. I'm going to tell you what. That ain't the end of it. This man right here is in the stable, not because his name Cactus Jack, 
because he's tough, baby, and because he wins matches. I want to thank you very much for getting out there and nailing him. Now the newest member to the stable. Oh, You're talking about a stable breaking down, collapsing. Oh. It's only building up. It's only getting better. My new champion, the Southern Tag Team champions right there. I saw him with those belts. I saw Bruno in their corner. I figured it's some kind of a deal had been made in there. Rocking something, Lance. When you win a belt, baby, when you're top of the line, when you climb to the top of the mountain, you don't have to figure it ain't going to be very long before the stable starts sending you contracts and top guys don't turn down stable contracts. You know what I'm talking about. I hear what you're talking about. We got to go to the ring. We got action, Dave. So one fall, 15-minute time limit, introducing at a total weight of 441 pounds, out of Memphis, Tennessee, Ken Raper, out of Kentucky, Tommy King, going against them from Atlanta, Georgia, at a total of 400. 54 pounds, the Rock and Roll RPMs, Mike Davis and Tommy Lane. And they're starting, it's Tommy Lane for the RPM. Tommy King head into the turnbuckle. They, uh, they won the titles day from Billy Travis and Scott Steiner and they're back up there lording it over and when I saw that downtown Bruno was connected with them, I knew that some kind of deal had been struck with the stud stable. Yeah, Bruno's in their corner again today, of course. This is a non-title match, by the way. Tommy Lane. Oh, lost Tommy King right on his back. Middle of the ring, Tommy King picks him up. Got him by the hair, you can see. Tags, Mike Davis. Well, there's a double move they put on you. Count as one, two. Looks like that's it. Yep. Didn't take very long there. 101, a minute, one second. The Rock and Roll RPM's getting the win. Well, I'll tell you, they just turned it in there with Tommy King and Ken Raper right here and now. Oh, showing off their new T-shirts. Coming out. Superstar Bill Dundee. Let's get around here and see what Billy's got to say. Hi, yeah, Billy. How, how are you doing? doing? Good. Dave Brown, we want to thank you for the rain, son. We need the rain. My plants was all dying, but Dave sent the rain, and I'm in a good mood. And you know why, downtown Bruno? Because I figured it out, brother. I was out here last week talking to you. Said I'd get down on my hands and knees and wrestle you. Blindfolded, one hand, two hands tied behind my back, and he never showed up. Oh, no, he sure didn't. And I think the boy is a coward. Well, I got to thinking. I know somebody that's about the same size as you downtown. And if you'll come on out here, I'll introduce him to everybody, and you can see him, brother. And that will make a whole lot of difference here. Now, come on over here, young fella. Last Russell. I don't want to brag a little bit, but this is a good-looking kid right here. Take a good look at this. Downtown Bruno. I believe this boy can beat you. He's 17 years old, and I think he can beat you because he's got two things that you don't have. One is a last name, which is Dundee, and the other one's a daddy, which is me, brother. So if you have enough guts to come out of this TV and say you'll wrestle him, I'd like to see that because I can beat you up. I know. Can you beat up downtown, brother? I can try. Well, that's all I ask you to do is just try. So if you have enough guts, brother, his name's Jimmy Dundee, and he's Bill Dundee's son. If you have enough guts, I would really like to see him beat you up in that ring, brother. More embarrassing is to beat you up, because I could kill you downtown. My boy just whooped you. So you made the challenge for Jamie against uh, sure downtown did. Bruno. I sure did, brother. Now, you I know you're serious about it. I am deadly serious. He's about the same size. He's 172 pounds, and he's 17 years old. Bruno, I think you're a little over 21. That makes you a man. If you got enough guts, come wrestle the boy. Thank you. There. <laughs> <laughs> downtown with good reason wouldn't accept bill's challenge no, in there not at all. It's, this would be interesting billy just comes back and say hey i'll tell you what my son will get in there and go with you and he's only 17 years old time out back into more action in a moment <laughs> got some great news for the folks in Owensboro, where championship wrestling is visiting every single week in the big air conditioning sports center. Hey, but first I want to remind you, next week television will be right here on Channel 7 at 1230 on Sunday. Be sure and pass that word for us. Yes, sir, Owensboro. 
coming up Wednesday night. The biggest card ever booked in Owensboro, headlined by an AWA World Heavyweight title match with Jerry Lawler defending against Wildfire Tommy Rick. Lots of other matches, including a lumberjack match, where Brickhouse Brown will be going against gorgeous Gary Young. We'll talk to Brick a little bit later, but how about Gary? And Owensboro, I'm coming at you. Fired up and kicking. Gary Young, let me tell you something, suck up. I got you in a lumberjack match. You know what that means, fool? There's gonna be somebody around the ring. Bill Dundee, Jeff Jarrett, Billy Travis, Scott Steiner. But make sure you ain't got nowhere to run, suck up, and nowhere to hide. And you're gonna be mine all night long, fool. Well, I'll tell you one thing about that. I think it's gonna come as a major surprise to gorgeous Gary Young when he doesn't look out there and see all of the entire stable sitting side by side all the way around that ring. Think that one won't be a dandy? You better believe, but it's only one. We've got a semifinal event up there that will have Jimmy Golden going in with Robert Fuller as his partner. Of course, Sylvia and Bruno in the corner are going against Jeff Jarrett and Bill Dundee. That is going to be some kind of head-kicking son of a gun. You'll watch it all going at Irwinsboro, right there in the sports center. Air-conditioned activity going every single week right there in Owensboro at the sports center. We hope maybe you're going to make it a plan around that area to be right there every Wednesday. You will not regret seeing the big action that's coming up. An entire card of it Wednesday night going in the sports center at Owensboro, Kentucky. Make it a point to be there with us. Okay, we're ready to go with the CWA heavyweight title match, Dave, and this should be a dandy. Bill Hickerson has just handed the belt over to Jerry Calhoun, the referee. Bill Dundee challenging for that belt. Jerry showing it to everyone. That's the belt that's at stake in this match. CWA heavyweight title is at stake. Bill Dundee, you know him well. He's out of Australia. Phil Hickerson out of Jackson, Tennessee. Hickerson with a huge weight advantage. Hickerson weighing in at 489, he admits to now. Bill Dundee at 214. This CWA heavyweight title match will have the television time limit on it rather than the one fall 60 minute situation. Uh-oh, not only Bruno, we've got the Tennessee stud Robert Fuller being wheeled out here by Sylvia. Bell time. I'm sure you will. Now here is Bill Dundee out here doing all kind of talking. He's got some snot-nosed punk out here. He wants to throw him in my face. That's his son, Bruno. It's a snot-nosed punk. I can say what I want, Lance. And listen here. He's going to bring this. What is he? He says he's 17. Is that what he said? That's what he's he said. 14 years old if he's a day. And I'm going to say another thing, Lance Russell. I've been in the professional wrestling business nine years. And Dundee says I might be over 21. Well, I'm closer to Dundee's age than I am his kid. You understand? I got my experience. I'm tough. I'm mean. I'm bad. I can beat up that kid any day of the week. And as far as I know, Dundee ain't never caught Eddie Mullen or nobody making no challenge. I'm the one that challenged him. And he didn't have the guts to face me. And he sent his son. He sent a boy to do a man's job. Because I'm a man. Dundee's not a man. He thinks his kid's a man, but he's not. And Lance, it ain't nothing but a thing. Because it's like Mama says it be that way sometimes. Sign it up. I'll accept any challenge from that goofy Bill Dundee. Anytime, any day, twice on Sunday. Downtown Burroughs. Not a scare. I know Dundee. You understand me? Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Let's get a couple of things straight with you folks out there. Dundee did challenge him, and Bruno wouldn't accept it, but Bruno has said right here, Dave, that he will accept the challenge from Jamie Dundee, yeah, 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 and yeah, that he'll yeah, yeah. fight him in there. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure that uh, Eddie Marlin will be interested to hear that. We'll have more on it a little bit later. Meanwhile, Phil Hickerson has guaranteed Robert Fuller, the Tennessee stud, that he's going to beat Dundee in two minutes. Well, he's a minute 45 into the match right now, and he's flat on his back. Dundee with a cover. Couldn't make it stick for a three count. Well, Dundee popped him with that right hand, got him right in the mouth. I think Billy knew that he wasn't going to be able to, to make it stick, but he was kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. He started to cover, then thought, what can I do? And here's 289 pounds. You don't pick him up and slam him that easy again. So he just went ahead and covered on it. He got the, got the one down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The test of strength. Hickerson, easily identified on the right. 
as being a very large gentleman. 289. Dundee stomps on the fingers down on the mat. Pickerson back to the corner now. A little, uh, little confidence. <laughs> what did he say? He said, something going right no. here. He's telling, telling Robert Fuller. You know, that's an interesting thing, Dave. We've seen a lot of guys get in there with Dundee when something didn't go right. Or a bunch of them. Sure and I mean have. big ones, too. <laughs> Billy Ball. Uh oh, that's a bad place yeah, to be. Dundee real bad. back into the corner. Bruno's got his foot from yep. outside, too. Whoa! Oh, Bruno gets a boot, literally, from Dundee as Dundee kicked him. Look at Look Fuller. Robert Fuller grabbing him from outside. Hickerson nailed him from behind. Dundee was keeping his eye on Fuller and Bruno. Hickerson gets it now with the upper arm. Bill Hickerson, the CWA champion. Got a heavyweight belt on the line. He's got a cover on Dundee. Dundee's got a foot over the bottom rope. Count stops at two. And the match will continue. Three minutes, 35 seconds gone in this one. Dundee, by the right hand. Jerry Calhoun, you can see him telling Hickinson about using the fist, but meanwhile, look at Bruno and Robert Fuller over here yeah. on Dundee. Both of them. Don't say no more. Stay away from him if you don't want us to say it anymore. Dundee into it as he comes off into it. Bill Dundee. Knocked back down right over the top of referee Jerry Calhoun. And Whoa, Hickerson goes by and stomps on Calhoun. Nails Dundee. And now it's Phil up to the top rope. He misses as Dundee rolls out of the way. Covers him up. The belt is at stake. And here comes gorgeous Gary Young going after Dundee. And Dundee takes him right over the top rope. Jimmy Golden coming out of the stud stable in the back, and Dundee meets him coming through the rope as Hickerson now picks Dundee up. Dundee slides him, rolls him back up. Is he going to get it? Referee pulls himself over one, and Dundee oh. is kicked right in the head. You notice Robert Fuller's yeah. out of that wheelchair all of a he's sudden. He's got those boots on. Earlier he had them in his hand, and now he's got those wrestling boots on. He's calling for the bell. That's going to be uh, going to be a disqualification. It's got to be a disqualification. But still, Bill is not going to win the belt. I don't know whether Bill is ever going to walk out of there or not. They're oh, they got it. Look at Bruno, Bruno, Bruno now. Yeah, take advantage now, Bruno. Way to go. He's cut open. Dundee busted him. open, yeah, by by when Fuller kicked him with those boots, Dave. Here comes Tommy King, and boy, he is slammed around. Yeah, you know, just looking at those boots, that right boot of Fuller has a has a sole on it that's thicker than the left one. Considerably, yes. Who knows what's in that sole? Steel plate? Whatever, it sure cut Bill Dundee's head open when he kicked him with it. Ray Odyssey, Sean Baxter, both out in the stable, keeping him out of the ring. Here comes Jeff Jarrett fighting his way through. As Bruno choking Dundee, Golden holding Jeff Jarrett. Fuller, as he was getting ready to put the boot on Jeff Jarrett. Oh, look at him. Oh, there's Jamie Dundee. Takes Bruno right off of his dad. They're rolling around. And the stable out of the ring. Jamie and Jeff Jarrett looking at... Uh, oh, boy, Billy. Billy is really pounded up bad. Huh? Mm. And blood is pouring out of him. His son, Jamie Dundee, out there with Jeff and Tommy King, and Dundee is really shattered in there. Disqualification. Dundee's going to win it, but the belt's going to stay with Phil Hickerson. We're going to take time out. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Hey, for 
first, I want to tell you again that next week our television here on Channel 7 is going to be right there on Sunday at 12.30, so be sure and spread that word for us. Okay, here's some towns coming up in the very near future. Sunday, September the 18th at 4.30 at Fort Knox at the uh, Sadowski Fieldhouse. You can save a buck on these towns by getting your tickets in advance. On Thursday, September the 15th, Hopkinsville, Kentucky will be held at the Convention Center at the Western Kentucky State Fairgrounds. And on Thursday, September the 8th, Paoli with the, uh, it's Paoli, Indiana, with the new air-conditioned Paoli High School serving as the host for championship wrestling. All of that action coming up on the 8th Thursday in Paoli, Indiana, the 15th in Hopkinsville, and on Sunday the 18th at Fort Knox. Now, Wednesday night, right there in Owensboro, you're looking at Ray Odyssey against Cactus Jack, Hickerson against Sean Baxter, downtown Bruno against Jamie Dundee, and headlined by a world heavyweight match. Back in the ring with more action coming up in just a moment. We've got a uh, uh, six-man tag match. It'll be our big main event today. Cactus Jack, gorgeous Jerry Young, and Jimmy Golden will be going against Scott Steiner, Sean Baxter, and Ray Otis. Oh, yeah, here he comes. The crippled up Robert Fuller. I noticed you right on that chip. Oh, yeah. They love a good rail. What'd you like yeah, to have the belt on? Yeah, good fight. As you know, Lance, that Mayo Clinic is the finest place in the world to go when you got health problems. And I'll put my health problems. And I just, hey, wait a second. Don't throw me Fuller. in the brow patch now. Don't throw me in the brow patch. On, All I've been on, getting Robert. from you guys is bad news. So give me a little good news. Well, if good news is what you want, if you want in that ring, young man, it's not going to be a mystery, man. It's going to be you. You've been crying all week that that leg was hurt. You couldn't walk on it. And you got in the ring and pulled what you did a while ago. Young man, you're going to get in the ring. If this makes you happy, then you ought to be... Oh, Beretta, don't throw me in the fire pack. Let me tell you something. That's going to be a monumental night when we get down to hell, I want to tell you. Because when we get there, not only are Golden and myself going to be taking on Jared, and probably a mystery man, because I stomped the guts out of Bill Dundee. <laughs> but also, Dundee, you're going to get to see your kid not get his butt paddled. No, sir, because Bruno's going to break his nose, baby. And I'm going to see him get the broken arm. I'm going to see him hauled off to the hospital. And then we get down to that lumberjack match. And here we got this boy in there, Brick House Boy, wrapping a real man in Gary Young and us to throw him back when he takes his little run. Because rabbits do run, you know. And when he takes his run, baby, you're not only going to get pitched back in that ring, boy, you're going to get your butt kicked by the entire stable. I tell you, it's one of the greatest nights of wrestling ever to come down because stable is going to walk in. Hey, come on, Robert. Wait a minute. You're avoiding what I want to know about. What is this, this boot you got on here? That's not a normal wrestling shoot. When a man comes out here and wrestles with a definite handicap, and then a slob like you wants to cut him down because he's got a protective boot, that's about as low as you can get, Russell. And I can tell you something. If those guys are your friends, I'm talking about that stinking Dundee jerk, that punk of his, and that goofy Brickhouse Brown. You better say goodbye to him because Stable's putting him away. Yeah, well, I'll tell you one thing for a fact. Somebody's going to get to you. And I don't know what you got in that boot, but you can't tell me that that's any protective boot. I wouldn't believe a word he would say about it for anything in the world. Okay, Robert Fuller definitely back in action without any question of a doubt. I want to, uh, for those who are not familiar with the situation between Jerry Lawler and Tommy Rich, do a very quick recap. We mentioned uh, two events that took place with uh, Rich. That's when Austin Idol and Rich posted Jerry Lawler, put him in the hospital and out of action, and a haircut situation that involved Tommy Rich and Austin Idol and Jerry Lawler. Let's take a look at a little recap video. Lawler going for a pile driver. Here's Tommy Rich. It's going to be a disqualification on Austin Idol in two minutes and 30.
to see the tape. I must see at the point where he entered the cage. I just absolutely am dumbfounded. And the barber not in an enviable position of being forced to cut the hair of an idol, and I don't mean Austin. Something that we never thought would be done. Lawler, having never lost a hair match, is having his head shaved in the middle of the ring with Rich and Idol, the culprit. And I can't put it any way but the fact that this didn't just happen. This took some heavyweight planning for them to pull this on the king. Yeah, right now we're going to switch it to Jerry Lawler. Jerry had some comments to make about the match with Tommy Rich. You know, it's true. After winning the AWA World Heavyweight Championship, I knew that the challenges were going to come from all over the country. And I knew that every one of them were going to be top contenders. And I knew that every one of them were going to be tough. And they have been so far. And this week, I'm sure, is going to be no exception. Because, you see, we've got a match coming up this week with Wildfire Tommy Rich. And boy, that's a name that... Uh, Brings a few things to mind for me. But before I talk about Tommy Rich, he sent an interview in, and I want to listen to, and I want you to listen to, just what this young man has to say. <laughs> well, well, well. Hello. Guess you thought you'd never see me again. Thought I was gone out of your area. Especially you, didn't you, Jerry Lawler? <laughs> you know, miracles never cease to amaze me. You know, I heard Jerry Lawler is a world heavyweight champion now. You know, Jerry Lawler, you know what I think about that? That's exactly what I think about it, Jack. You know, I beat Harley Race. I wrestled Flav with the time limit. Jerry Lawler, you know, like I said, it's got to be the biggest rib in the world for you to sit in Memphis, Tennessee, for you to travel all over the country and defend that world heavyweight title. It should be me doing it. Well, let me tell you something. Tommy Wildfire Rich, baby, I'm back in the saddle. So look out, Jerry Lawler, because like I said, I'm coming back to town. So you better be looking, because there's one thing I'm hungry for. I done laid you up. You're looking at the man that sent you to the hospital. Think back, Jerry. You're looking at the man that shaved your head. So when I tell you I'm going to take that title from you, that world heavyweight title, you can take it to the bank, Jerry Lawler, because like I said, I beat Harley Race, I've wrestled Flair, I've whipped him, and Jerry Lawler, don't think you're half the man. I'm coming for you, I'm coming for the title. You know, a lot of things have gone on. You ain't seen Tommy Rich in a long time. I ain't coming to please nobody. Tommy Rich ain't changed. I still feel the same light about you, Lawler, as I have the whole time. You know, you wouldn't give nobody a shot, but I stood and I waited and I watched all them geeks you've been defending that title against. Come on, Jiro. Get real, baby. Look, here's Tommy Wildfire Rich. You and all of them people look good because, Jerry Lawler, you're looking at the man that's going to kick your butt. You know, Tommy Rich doesn't have to remind me of the fact that he once beat Ric Flair and won the NWA version of the World Championship. He certainly doesn't have to remind me that he's the man that caused me to get my head shaved the only time that it's ever been done. And most importantly, I don't need anybody, least of all Tommy Rich, to remind me that he's the man that put me in the hospital, that I had to go through two surgeries over, that almost ended my career. Because believe me, I think of that each and every day. And Tommy Rich, you're doing a lot of talking about the past. You're doing a lot of talking about what has, has happened, what's gone down before. But we're not talking about the past. We're talking about right now. We're talking about this week. We're talking about you and me. And it's been a long time coming, but it's going to happen. Because now we're going to step in that ring. And sure, the AWA World Heavyweight Championship is going to be at stake. And sure, that's probably the most important thing on your mind. But it's not going to be the most important thing on my mind. What's going to be on my mind, Tommy Rich, is what you've talked about. The fact that you did cause me to get my head shaved, and the fact that you did put me in the hospital and almost end my career. And I'm going to make this a promise to you, Tommy Rich. Before I get through with you in that match, before I finish with you, you're going to be wishing, you're going to be praying to God that you had an end in my career. Because I promise you this, I'm going to hurt you, Tommy Rich. I'm not just coming in there to hang on to that title. Because like with Austin Idol, this has gone far beyond the title. 
this is more than about any world championship. This is about me and you, Tommy Rich. And you know it's payback time. And it's going to happen to you this week. I promise you that. Remember, we've got that big six-man tag match. It's coming up as our final expiration of time title match here a little bit later on. Coming out right now, a guy who was the uh, center of a lot of controversies in one, more than one way, uh, Brickhouse Brown, who has now had his problems with the stud stable and is facing him from a different direction now. Brickhouse. Controversy has always been a name that I've been associated with, ain't that right, man? I'm aware of that. Let and me I tell you something. A lot of things been going on, and I want to see for myself exactly what's been building up here. You understand? Because I lived it. I've never had a chance to actually look and see what was going on. I understand. We you got a tape made up. Right. Let me see it. Okay, we've got a videotape that kind of recaps some of the things that the Tennessee stud and the stud stable did involving Brickhouse. Let's take a look at it. Oh, yeah, man, look at that. Ain't a nice Robert, that's not that's funny. That's not funny. So I keep doing it. Well, that's no, what's no, no, no. up, baby. No. So I went out, oh. and I got my man here a watermelon. All right, I cut it over. Boy, look at this. glass off that thing. I thought you'd get it in a minute. Wait a minute, man. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. First of all, man, let me tell you something right now, man. I don't like watermelon, you understand? Oh, oh I don't like watermelon. I don't appreciate you coming out here trying to humiliate me by bringing out some watermelon. What do you got back there next? Some chicken? There's some watermelon. Huh? What I did. Let me tell you what I did. I don't appreciate that. Let me tell you what I did. I was thinking of you when we had the party. I was thinking of everybody in the stable. Right. You got a color hang up. Yeah, right. You got a bad problem with a color hang up. Hang up. Stable. We're you out here trying to count what happened. And you get like me this to wear, man. What you think I am? I'm some kind of fool. Like look at this and look at that, what you gave Gary, man. Huh? Get over here. I want everybody yeah, to hear face. this, man. You might as well be a color chart when TV goes off, hanging around the, the TV screen all night, man. All right. You got a hang up, and that's all hey. your problem is. Hey. We're out here trying to have a good time. I made you a part of the greatest man in the world. Face, man, you better get so hey. 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 What now? Since I got hurt earlier this week. We've seen a lot of lone faces in the this stable, and I want to cure a little bit, bit of it right now if I can. If I get everybody's attention just a minute, guys, I bought everybody a little something. And I'll take real quick, not much your program here, to give me a first of all, Gary. <laughs> How do you like it, son? Oh. That's for you. Gorgeous yeah. Gary. Yeah. The gorgeous one. Yeah. 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 Now listen, Phil, while I'm handing out the other presents, I want you to be looking at that, son. Check out what that is right there. <laughs> That's going to make you feel pretty good. Roll the top of them. David Bond and Lance. Man. I've been, I've been holding that for you ever since you won that title. I'm so proud of you, man. I don't know what you're saying. Man, you got I got more goodies. You got my own love and I got more goodies. I love it. For the prettiest girl Thank you. in the Thank state you. of Tennessee, Kentucky, Arkansas, Mississippi, or any place else, my Georgia peach, I'm talking about Sylvia. That's for you right there. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Get over here. Yeah, man. I got something for you, too. Oh, you didn't get something for me, did you? Yes, sir. Oh, no. Check it out, baby. Oh, no. Oh, no. Check it out. It's a Rolex. It's a Rolex. That's a Rolex. Check it out. Yeah. That's, That's a real thing. That's a Rolex. 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 Have you ever seen hey. a Rolex? That's before? not a dime, bro. Right, bro. That's oh. a real thing. That's a Rolex. Very generous. That ain't all of it. That ain't all of it, Buck. That ain't all of it. Hold that up, but I got you some more. <laughs> I'll tell you, you figured I was going to come out here and whine like a Jarrett. You can forget that, because I don't do no whining, Lance Russell. I lay it down, baby. The ugly stick. That's what I got for you, son. Yeah. Talking about Those that Jarrett and Dunn, baby. Boys. Listen, I got you a bunch of royal crown with that, too, boy. <laughs> How about that? It's a heck of a day, is it not? Huh? <laughs> what a day it is. You I appreciate it, man. I don't believe it. <laughs> Pick up, pick it up there. Look, you got there, man. 
Brother, let me tell you something right now. Each week you done came out here and embarrassed me and degraded me. Every time I turn around, you coming out here getting your kicks off, bringing something out there like that, ridiculing me. Let me tell you something right now. I have had it! I'm gonna tell you something else too right now. I ain't gonna call you on the phone. I ain't writing you no telegram. I'm telling you to your face right now. You low life thinking, no good, no happening. Ah, quit! you can do with that car. Come on, Rob, listen, you hear what me? Great, Robert. Take the stick and beat him up. It's already three on one. Boy, you are a real sport. I'll tell you that. Will you call these guys off right now? You ought to have your leg hurt in there. I want you. saw it, that's exactly what happened in there, Brick House. Let me tell you something right now. Robert Fuller, you got to be a sick, demented individual. And let me tell you something, you low-life, good-for-nothing, no-happening shyster. I've got the whole weight of my people to bear on my shoulder because of that. You whipped me like a runaway slave. Like you was making me say my name was Toby. Well, my name ain't Kuta Kente. My name, brother, is Brickhouse Brown. And let me tell you something right now. I'm going to take all of you, and I'm going to take everything out that my people have had to endure for years. I'm going to take it out on each and every one of you. Ooh, let if me, I can say what I want to say. Let, let, let me show them... Uh some videotape of the action that took place when Brickhouse did get in the ring with gorgeous Gary Young. Here it is. But Brickhouse sure made it pay off big soft kick. Young got up off the mat and as he turned around, Brickhouse cut loose with that drop kick. He just walked over and glommed downtown Bruno, slams him down on the concrete. Uh-oh, from the crowd. Sounds like some of the stud stable is coming out. Bill Hickerson, he jumps in the ring, it'll be a disqualification. 
Let me tell you something, boys. The fun ain't even started to begin yet. You understand, Gary Young? Ooh, sucker, you mine. I got you in a lumberjack match. And I heard Stud out here saying, all y'all gonna be out by the yeah. ring. Well, let me tell you something right now. Jeff, Billy Travis, Scott Steiner, Sean Baxter, they gonna be around the ring too, you understand, to watch me. And I know something else. Robert Fuller and Gary Young, take a look around that building, and all you gonna see is this. Because the brothers and sisters going to be there, and I know they're going to be right there for one reason, to see me kick butt and take some name, because that can of kick butt is open wide up. Okay, we'll be interested in seeing that Lumberjack match with Gary Young and Brickhouse Brown. Time out. Be back in a moment. into the action in just a moment. Orangeboro's got quite a card coming up. One of them is going to be that lumberjack match in there. Interesting array of lumberjacks spread around the ring, Gary Young. Yeah, Lance, I see you've managed to do it again. Not Somehow me. you managed to always get the rules slid in to someone that you like's favor. Well, Brickhouse Brown, you've come out and you've done it right this time. Somehow you managed to get Rick Steiner, Billy Travis, Jeff Jarrett, and that little short midget Dundee out there, and none of my stable can be a ringside. Well, brother... That don't matter. I'm going to come out there. I'm going to come out to with both these little American soup bones pounding on your head. And there's only one joyful thing about all of it. No matter what happens, brother, at the end of that night, I'm picking up my pay and I'm picking up your pay. Take that to the bank. Well, we'll find out about that one. And Robert Fuller will be there with his brand new boot. A miraculous healing job, I would say, Robert. Let me tell you something about this healing job, and let me make it very clear to you so you understand, just like everybody out there understands, because it seems, Lance Russell, you're about as ignorant as the rest of them. One thing is that that goof jumped me after the bell rang, that I was the winner of the match. I'm talking goof. I'm talking about you, midget Bill Dundee. You jumped me, man, from behind, and you put a hold to me. It's illegal in the first place, and banned from wrestling, and you hurt my leg. And because of that ignorance, and let's make it clear, that's the reason that I got to wear the boot I've got on right now. But nevertheless, whether I got a handicap or not, when it comes to handicap, I'm the best damn handicap wrestler in the United States of America. And I'm going to come with one thing in mind, and that's to take you, midget, and that punk with you, that blonde-headed thorn in my side, and put you out of my side. If Orangeboro is a place that that punk finishes his career, then let that be the best thing, because that's exactly what's going to happen. Bill Dundee, you're going to meet the wrath of the stud stable. We're going to be ready to go with our six-man tag match in just a moment. Jeff Jarrett out with us now. Jeff. Lance, I just want to say a few quick words. Brickhouse Brown, I promise you this. I'm going to be at ringside with you. I'm at, no funny stuff is going on. And as for the match, Robert Fuller, I'm no dummy. I was supposed to be out here today to talk about a match with myself and Bill Dundee against Jimmy Golden and a mystery partner. But will you come out here with that crazy-looking boot? Mm -hmm. Hey, you ain't crippled. Nothing's wrong with you. That boat is, That boot is loaded. And me and Bill Dundee, he's not out here right now, I guarantee you one thing. But he's come back, and he's had a lot worse beatings, and his head is busted, and he's bleeding from head to toe. He's busted from head to toe, and I guarantee you. Bill Dundee, Robert Fuller, you got some dues to pay, I guarantee you that, Bill. I'm not going, Randy, I got a few things to say to this idiot. No, I'm not. You listen, you long, lanky drink of water. 1975 is when I came here, me and George Barnes, and everybody that's came in here was going to do something to me, and everybody said the same thing as you. He's only a midget. He's only five foot seven tall, and he only weighs 200 pounds. But I'm the toughest damn midget you'll ever see. Pound for pound, I'm the baddest dude in the world. And I'm going to tell you something, Fuller. This is my kid. And if you put your hand on him, I'll kill you. Do you understand? It was a joke for him to wrestle Bruno. And that's what he's going to do. But if you go down there, I'll kill you, you son of a... I'm telling you, Jack, you ain't doing it. Now, it's a dead no mystery partner. It's you, Fuller. And it's this kid right here. And it's me. You can say anything you want. But if you put your hand on him, I will kill you, Fuller. And that's all i got to say to you. He will wrestle downtown, Bruno. And I'll be watching. And if you go near the ring, I'm coming down, brother, and I'm beating your damn brains out. And then when he beats up, Bruno, me and Jeff are sticking you out. Okay. 
Well, I can understand him being upset uh, after what he received at the hands of. Yeah. Okay, we got a six-man tag match coming up. Right? Yeah. You know what? I hate Phil Dundee. I've hated him for a long time. I hate him even more now than I've ever hated him in my life. And you know what? I hate his punk kid. I hate him. And if he thinks he's got to worry about Robert Fuller or Gary Young or Jimmy Golden or Cactus Jack or Phil Hickerson or anybody in the stable putting their hands on his kid, forget it. He don't got to worry about that. You better worry about downtown Bruno beating up your punk kid. Because I'm going to beat him to death. I'm going to show you what nine years this business can do. It was 1985 when I come here. 85, brother. It wasn't 75. But I know all about you, Phil. You're a punk now. You've always been a punk. Your kid's a punk. And you know what? You better keep your eyes on down to I'm going to beat that kid here like the dog that he is. He dresses like a punk. He looks like a fairy. Just like you, Dundee. And you're not a tough midget. Little Coco's a tough midget. Karate Kid's a tough midget. You're not a tough midget. You're just a little dwarf. That's all you are. You ain't tough at all. And Dundee, your kid's even more of a punk than you are. And I'm going to show you. If you don't mess with downtown Bruno. Okay, Bruno, that's enough. We've heard all the ranting and raving we need out of it. We've got a six-man tag match going with a brand new face in the ring, Dave. Cactus Jack. He's out of Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. Yeah. Big guy. Weighs in at 247. That's him right there in the black. Sean Baxter. He's got by the hair. Slammed him into the boot of gorgeous Gary Young. And that's Jimmy Golden, the other member of that team. Getting in a shot at him, too, while Sean is pinned back on the ropes. Sean's partners, Scott Steiner out of Detroit, and Ray Odyssey. We had our first look at him a couple of weeks ago. He's out of Surf City. Downtown Bruno in the corner of Gary Young, Cactus Jack, and Jimmy Golden. Gary Young coming in now after the tag. Right boot to the midsection. Sean Baxter whipped across the way. Up high in the air. Young just threw him straight up about eight feet and let him drop right in the center of the ring. Jimmy Golden in there now after the tag. Jimmy out of Montgomery, Alabama. You know him probably best as the longtime tag team partner of the Tennessee stud, Robert Fuller. In there in the six-man match today, Sean Baxter's head slammed into the mat. Hey, Lance! Where's Dundee at now, see? He runs off like a dog when I come out here. Where's he at? Where's his kid at? I want him, see? The stud stable wants him, and I want his kid. I've wanted him for a long time. get him. Don't worry. I'm the real superstar. Superstar downtown Bruno, because Mama says it be that way sometimes. I want Dundee. He conveniently waits till Bill is gone. He never would come out and accept his challenge. Why is I scared to you? Why is I scared? Why is I scared? I ain't scared of nothing. I'm a big bird. Downtown Bruno. Back to the corner over there where he belongs. Let's hope he stays there. Here comes Ray Odyssey again after the tag. He He's goes after summer. Golden. Yes, sir. Oh, look out. They're all in there. We got all six of them in the ring. Ray Odyssey trying to put an abdominal stretch on Jimmy Golden. Cactus Jack with a snap suplex, snaps uh, Odyssey down to the mat, Golden covers, referee counts two and three, and the team of Golden, Cactus Jack and gorgeous Gary Young have themselves a victory in the first fall here. The time, two minutes, 56 seconds. 2.56, and a six-man tag victory in the first fall goes to Golden, Cactus Jack, and gorgeous Gary. We're gonna take time out, check our time, and we'll be back in just a moment. We got to go. Right. See you next week. Bye bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling.